Well, hello, friends, and welcome to Team Soul Navigation's Talk Show Tuesday. I'm Linda Fraser. I'm your co-host. And uh, today we're going to be interviewing Stacy. Today we're going to talk about soul connections. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Deb. Oh my gosh, this is exciting. So soul connections and your connection to them. How do you bring that out? So there's, there's a lot of different ways that we can have soul connections. Obviously, I think the most common one people refer to is a love to love soul connection. And, you know, first of all, we have soul connections with our soul group. And for those of familiar with maybe what a soul group is or a soul tribe, and it's oftentimes on a soul level, we tend to be a part of a different soul group that is in a larger scale. And then we have soul connections within that. And oftentimes we incarnate with soul tribe members. So for example, many light workers are part of the same soul tribe. And within our family, we can have a lot of different members of our soul tribe too. And when we have, like for me, we can even have people who have crossed over that we have intense soul connections with. And that never changes, especially people who are husband and wife or have loved each other romantically. That love continues endlessly. It doesn't. Go so ahead. Is it like soul connections is like um, all the different ways that we're emotionally connected with someone else? It is because it's, it's on a soul to soul level. I mean, certainly, absolutely. It can be on a, on a physical level too, that we express that. And, you know, we have things like soulmates, which people are probably very familiar with and different terminology for what we call that, like the one and the person that we love in that capacity. And soulmates can be children too, for people, they can be uh, pets even. So they can come in different forms, but typically for, and there's also good and bad parts of soul connections too. And it's not just all kind of love and light that we experience with soul connections. And that gets into to a little bit more of the karmic piece of soul connections because we have karmic partners too, which are part of soul connections. And I think one of the interesting things that I don't think as humans we always remember is that when we came to earth, we came here to evolve our soul. And believe it or not, everything that we go through, we already knew and agreed to go through before we came here. And that includes everybody we meet. Yeah, because I mean, it's like, um, I have this mentor, Stephen Forrest, and he always uses the phrase, we decided on our birth chart and we're standing on the edge of the uh, pool, so to speak, on the diving board into the, into the next world, which is earth. And God says to you, are you sure you want this one? And we go, yeah, yeah, we we'll it. <laughs> and we dive. There we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a great um, analogy. So then when we're gifted with this lifetime, we kind of take on these roles of, are we going to work on trust issues? Or are we going to work on building an empire or whatever our internal makeup is? And we have these partners in crime, so to speak, right? That are so yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because, and the way that spirits kind of explained it to me, we can think about it as kind of a round table where we know what we're going to go through and experience. And we kind of say like, hey, everybody, here's what I'm going to need for, for my soul. And, and we get together with people. And then sometimes we fulfill things for them. And, and, and sometimes uh, that, that's, um, um, hey, brother, would you mind stabbing me in the back? Because I need exactly. that or whatever. Exactly. And Sometimes I will tell you, Linda, that, you know, we all need people sometimes to play that bad role, like we would say. And when we think about, like, let's take a romantic relationship, for example, because I'm sure lots of people may have had them and experiences where people may have 
uh, cheated or done something that was not positive in the relationship, those people essentially actually love your soul so much that they agreed to play that role so that you could learn whatever you were learning in that capacity. Because it's not across the board, but many times when we have those types of relationships, it is so that on a soul level, we can learn our worthiness. Because over the evolution of the soul, there's been a lot of times where we have abandonment issues or trust issues and can have sort of this toxic pattern because the energy will continue to play out unless it's resolved. It's just like when we have a mercury retrograde, we'll continue to experience the things until we break the pattern of what we're working through, through that retrograde. So they actually do really love us on a soul level that much to play that role for us when we need it. Yeah. So it's an interesting way of approaching when we feel like we hold like judgment or blame still for those people. Mm -hmm. And certainly everybody goes through their own healing process in their own time. But I think that when we can understand it from a higher level and look at the role that they played for us and what we learned from it, that's a really good way for someone to shift through that. And that may take years to get to. Or a lifetime. Or a lifetime. Yes. Yes. Depends on where we're at maybe and what help we have and what desire we have to work through it or do we want to fall back into the victimhood? Yes. Yeah, we always get that choice. You mentioned earlier that um, through lifetimes, you know, we're working on our worthiness, our self-worthiness. So if we look at soul connections, um, other than, than the intimate one, you, what yeah. about the family one? Let's say mother and yeah. son. Exactly. That's a great uh, example, Linda. So many times we can see, this is talking more of a little bit of what we would consider maybe a toxic dynamic between parents. And oftentimes for the sacred masculine, it can be hard because they're raised in a society where there's a sense of obligation to, to, to take care of people. And sometimes there can be a dynamic where the line is very blurry and some mothers really like to hold on to their sons and say somebody comes in and starts dating that son and the mother may feel like that son perhaps maybe belongs to her or the dynamic isn't very healthy and someone could look at that dynamic and say well that's really manipulative and how come that person can't see it that person is learning their worth with that person and that person that agreed to kind of be in that manipulative capacity or i mean sometimes it can be where even where that person might feel a little bit of enslavement that comes from it like always having to be there or always having to do something because we tend to be human doings instead of human beings and so we can give a lot of ourselves to other people, especially people that we love. And, you know, but there's this sense of maybe obligation that comes from that. And so that person in, in that's playing the son, his learning experience, he's learning to reclaim his own worth, essentially to set himself free from that energy too. But it's, it's not always an easy thing that happens. And it's, it, it also depends a lot on ancestral lineage because when we come down, we also take on things within our ancestral lineage, which can play a big role in that too. So it's kind of, as we're multidimensional beings, it's very multidimensional what we go through and what we choose to experience because 99% of the time, it's all in our unconscious mind that we don't even remember that we signed up for it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it can come to the surface over a period of time and we can recognize it and look back 20 years and say, wow, I can see that and I can see how that helped me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and 
and so that that person it that's the male and the the father and the mother son role you know it's also helping him like i said to kind of reclaim his personal power but it's going to help him be more healthy and whole so he can be that healthy partner for his person that's becoming his partner and i think one of the things that can get really frustrating when we're dealing with people is well so, my are... <laughs> so you know one of the things that is interesting in that dynamic too is that as an outsider perhaps looking in like being that person maybe that's dating that that gentleman sometimes people can get frustrated with the life lessons that those people are going through and maybe there's karma at play and there's also a healing process that comes from that mm -hmm. and the thing that i think is the hardest is that we in no way can control someone else's healing process or a life lesson no matter how hard we try and yeah. so it can be really frustrating yeah the only thing we can do is support that person yes wherever they're at yeah and, you know that's also a soul connection when you're on the outside looking in right yeah. Say you're that woman dating this man that that has um i don't know what i call it a weird a, attachment well I, maybe a challenging family dynamic that's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Challenging family dynamic. I think it's interesting too, Stacey, that the mother also has some karma that she's working through and some life lesson that she is also trying to gain through this. Yes, absolutely. And I think that one of the things for people to understand about that, because sometimes we could walk around this crazy world and see people that may be harder energy to deal with mm -hmm. and maybe like what we would classify as not nice people but I don't love to say that but people who have a harder time their soul is really wounded and so most times when people are in some type of toxic dynamic or there's a lot of negativity there their soul has their own wounds that they are working through. And we can come to this world and we do have amnesia about what we're learning, but we all have the choice to follow that life path and to choose to learn the lessons that we came here to learn. And some people, they just can't handle it. And they can't be, because you have to be willing to like look at yourself and take a certain accountability for things in order to really learn those lessons too and that's really hard to do for a lot of people yeah, yeah. Really. it takes a lot of strength to look inside i also think that you know just like if you enter any kind of school there's different grades there's different levels mm -hmm. so yeah. some a soul that's having a, a difficult time getting out of the negativity i mean the best thing that we could probably bring forward to them is compassion yeah and i think patience too and also learning the art of detachment like not owning it for or not owning the responsibility to fix that or to make it better you know just how i mentioned earlier that that say that person is dating the man that's in that relationship and for that other person dating that person it can be frustrating but that's the opportunity. Part of the reason it's frustrating is because usually in romantic relationships, there's always some type of soul dynamic, whether it's soulmate or whether it's a karmic partner or whatever, you're learning lessons from them. But when you feel like they haven't called you in a day or two days and you're worried about maybe hearing from them, that's also the opportunity for you to work through things like abandonment or um, where you felt rejected in the past. And so it goes both ways. So it's so amazing how all of these things intertwine with each other, where essentially everybody's learning something from someone else at the same time. I like that you said that too. And 
it kind of makes me feel like, so when you say um, people are going through abandonment, it's like the human condition has certain wounds that we deal with that are universal wounds. We're all dealing with them to some level and degree. We're all working through them to some level and degree. And abandonment yeah. and self-worth are two huge ones. Yes. And that's on a collective level and then on an individual level too. And, you know, that's where a lot of times inner child work can come in handy then really do some inner child healing. I think Susie does uh, inner child wounds and can help people understand that. But it's so incredible how that dynamic, because maybe some, maybe someone that's dealing with an abandonment issue that's worried about that connection, that soul connection. Because if you have that soul connection, that person's not going anywhere. You know, because when it's love between soul to soul, it's it's love. But it can even be from maybe parents get divorced and then that child doesn't feel like they're understood or uh, that they feel like that man is going to leave them, just like maybe their dad had to leave. So the patterns repeat throughout. That's why many times in life we can look back at a relationship and be like, wow, I dated my dad. <laughs> you know, It can take a while for you to see that pattern in the course of your dating history. But, but we, can, we can do that and it happens and people can date their moms and we all go through that capacity. And that's when past life stuff can get real interesting because we can have within that mother-son relationship, they could have been lovers in a past life. Right. You know? right. So there's karma between them in that area for them. So it can get really wild. Uh, dealing with all of that. I would just put one little caveat in there because I like everything that you said. It's, it's so true. It's so dynamic. And, and we, I, I agree with you. I think we have played different roles in each other's lives in our little pods, our little soul connection pods. But I would say uh, as a caveat to some people that um, even though there's that soul love connection, there is once in a while an issue where you would not want to stay with someone like that yeah. it was a dangerous situation if they were yes. um, abusive or anything like that. Mm -hmm. so that that's something yeah. they're working out again, you know, yes. bless them. Uh, hope that they can work through that and come across into the other side to be, you know, a nice calm soul. Yeah. In this world. And when there are relationships like that too, they tend to be very karmic. And karmic goes both good and bad, but in dynamics like that, it's it's a very heavy karmic uh, pattern, you know, for people to go through. And because, believe it or not, I mean, there are even circumstances where people can have karmic patterns of harming the other person. And so that tends to be that energy loop that can happen from past lifetimes that's still happening in a present lifetime too. Yeah. So yeah. it can be really, really tough. And sometimes we really have to use discernment with people. I also kind of think too that, you know, even if they were in the, it, say, say someone would be in that situation where they were in an abusive relationship and it's that soul connection. There's this opportunity for that person, I think, comes up, whether it's a teacher or whether it's a grocery store clerk or someone can come in out of the blue and they could be the sole connection, the catalyst to help propel you out of that situation. Yes. Or any situation you need help yeah. in. Absolutely. And I know I've experienced that firsthand, uh, you know, in college. So, but we do oftentimes meet that person and it can be a random conversation where that person just helps us see it clearly to understand like, maybe I do deserve better, you know, because sometimes we can get caught up in the pattern of it's comfortable because we at least know how to handle it because it's, there's the physical abuse part. Yes. But there can also be mentally and emotional abuse. That's part of it too that can be really entrenched in, in a dynamic between people. Yeah, yeah. very entrenched. Gosh. <laughs> well, how about, 
soul tribes. You, you touched on that earlier in the conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe so, tell us more about that. Sure. And I think that's, that's something that many people, I find that a lot of people sometimes want to know that information about them. Like what soul tribe am I in? Because it can, it can vary. I mean, depending on how big you want to go with it, essentially we all come from the stars at one point or another. And so we can have soul tribes that are part of the star systems. We can have soul tribes that are part of earthly incarnations. Mm -hmm. So maybe there are people that have incarnated so many times and perhaps older souls that have been part of, let's say Native American culture for hundreds of their lifetimes, if they've been incarnating for thousands and thousands of times, or even um, certain indigenous, other indigenous tribes, or even maybe like Vikings or uh, in the French area. So we can, when we, when our soul chooses, like they, we really want to incarnate and let's say like ancient Egypt, because souls that have incarnated many times often have incarnated in ancient cultures like ancient Egypt and even like the Mayan times and the Incan times. So those sort of tribes can be part of who we are. And that's where we can always have this recollection of like, I know I was there. And I think we find that often when we are going through, I don't know why spirits bringing this up um, because it has to deal with spirit animals, but like oftentimes we can see clues from when we're younger. So like my spirit animal, for example, is a thunderbird. And I know I've incarnated many times as a Native American. And when I was like maybe four or five, I went to a festival and I got a, a pouch that had a thunderbird on it. And I didn't know why. It was like totally just like, it just happened, right? Yeah. And But oftentimes we see clues of where our soul tribe is based on what we're drawn to, you mm -hmm. know, like, and we can even have, you know, Native American uh, interests maybe from like the West, uh, Western part of the United States, like more of the Navajo or the Pueblo Indians, or then we can have maybe a, a calling to more of an indigenous tribe that was a native tribe in Australia yeah. or, where, or in Africa. And our souls have incarnated as so many different things that it all, we all have that cellular memory within us on that soul connection. And I think that's also what makes it so interesting when we meet someone that we have that soul connection to, or even a fellow tribe member, where we can, sometimes we can feel it very strongly where we can almost feel like the butterflies. That's often an expression like you feel butterflies with somebody or it can come over a wave with you where you're just like, whoa, or it can be like, I have to know that person, mm -hmm. you know, for people who have felt that. And that's definitely a soul connection and definitely past life stuff that comes into play for people. Yeah, I, I like that so interesting because I have the same thing with Native American culture. I just, I'm so drawn to it. I'm just, I just absolutely adore, love it. It just feels good to me. Mm -hmm. And then my daughter is so on another plane, like she's all about the Irish and she wants to go to Ireland and she just, it, it's just so interesting. So she's been drawn to books about that. She's been drawn to the culture, to the band, like to the music. It, so it's just kind of inherent, like you were saying, it's cellular memory yeah. it comes out in these little ways. So we get these little hints yeah. about our, I guess our soul tribe, you know? Yeah, because our, our cellular memory and our subconscious and really our unconscious too, it remembers everything that we've ever been through on a soul level. So that's why many times when someone talks about like a trigger or even when someone is opening up spiritually, when someone's going to open up their intuition, sometimes they can have a bad reaction to that. And 
It can be because perhaps in a lifetime you were persecuted for ha having your, your gifts and your intuition open. So it can cause kind of this chaotic energy in our system because the body's like, hey, that didn't go over well last time. So let's think about this because are you sure you wanna do that? And even if you look at, let's say a romantic relationship, when we can experience something where maybe someone's really afraid to come close to that person and like really open up, when it's a real deep soul connection, oftentimes there are lifetimes where you were maybe hurt by knowing that person or someone was trying to harm that other person. I mean, if you go back to even the Middle Ages, that was a very different time, you know, and people would kidnap other people. And I mean, unfortunately, that's still something that's done today sometimes, but there can be really cellular fears of someone harming someone you love. Mm -hmm. There's even, um, I know a good friend of mine is very fearful of the dark and she's a, an amazing, intelligent, accomplished, secure, loving person just perfect you would never think that and and she knows it's not from this lifetime mm -hmm. yeah yeah just so we the cellular level but yeah she's and it can, whole tribe. yes and that can be too from maybe even being fearful of you know someone breaking in or someone trying to get you in the middle of the night there's there's lots of circumstances that that can happen but sometimes what can happen is by becoming aware of it and becoming aware perhaps of that past life, you can actually begin to heal those things within your cellular memory by just bringing it to awareness like, oh, that's what's going on, you know? If you can, you can identify it, yeah. you can heal it. You can yes. see, you can feel it, you can heal it, you can release it. Yes. And then that allows you to elevate yourself and uplift yourself and, and create even better, stronger dynamics that are really where you're coming to the table, so to speak, healthy on all different levels, you know, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And so can that, those other people. Yeah. And don't you think too, as a person gets healthier, uh, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically, that they can lift up those around them in their soul tribe too, or their soul connections, they can help uplift their energies. Yes, they absolutely can. And I will say on that point too, that sometimes in soul connections, there can be a fine line between assisting and then also creating like a codependency, which is really common and it can be common in soul connections too. And that's why it is incredibly important to have even energetic boundaries where making sure your own cup, so to speak, is filled before giving all of your energy to other people too. And learning when to, when you need to have a moment to collect yourself and, and regenerate your own energy and to know that that's okay to do. And everybody does that differently. Some people maybe get really quiet and sleep or some people may watch funny movies and laugh. You know, everybody's going to kind of deal with that differently. Yeah. Yeah. Or somebody will pull and go climb a mountain or something. Yes. <laughs> That's the way it is. And do you think that we have soul connections with, you know, say, say we have a soul connection and, and we're, a couple is married, because this happens a lot, especially in our age, time, I mean, in the world, where they're married, they have children, so they're, bringing a family and then they get divorced. Do um, you think that soul connection is going to continue into another lifetime or is if they ended it amicably and they were still supportive of each other, then that might be the end of that soul connection because they learned whatever they needed. Like, how do you think that works? Well, I think that it's going to be, I think it might vary per person, like who that circumstance is, because sometimes when you have sort of like this karmic pattern, there is a way when you come to the completion of that lesson that, that then that lesson is complete. Mm -hmm. 
and you don't have to learn that lesson through that person anymore. And I, I don't think that it matters in if it's amicable or not. And certainly you can create additional karma for yourself if you know, somebody chooses to do something that's not nice uh, to do to the other person. But it would depend on the, the soul lessons of those people that they're, that they're working through. But there, could, there are times when then that lesson, if you choose not to face it, then you're just going to have to keep replaying it out until you can learn what your soul chose to learn from that person and from that experience. Yeah, there's, yeah. and I think it's something like, um, you know, if, if you need to learn something, God will knock on the door. Mm -hmm. And if you don't answer, God will pound on the door. <laughs> yeah. If you don't answer, God will kick down the door. Like, right. bless it. <laughs> yeah, I've had moments like that too, Linda, where, you know, it was just like, okay, here you go. There, yes. <laughs> sit on your butt and figure it out. <laughs> Yep. But it's, as well. Yes. And it's, I will tell you in those circumstances, um, it has, in, in my experience, it has always been for the betterment of growth mm -hmm. to see those lessons, you know, because I'm a big person of like, show me a sign. And then we see a sign and I'm like, I don't like that sign. Show me another one. <laughs> and oftentimes when we see the sign of like, no, that's not for you right now. We cannot want to hear that. Yeah. And the powers that be will get the point across when, when it's time to kind of end a karmic relationship or a karmic pattern. It can, or put some space sometimes between people because when we're going through a healing process, like this year has been really healing for a whole lot of people. And sometimes when we go through some stuff, our dynamics between our family, between our friends can change. And that can simply be because of where each person is at that moment. It doesn't mean that it's maybe forever. And so it can create these other healings for other people. And so sometimes we just shift through different uh, people to learn different things through. And I think that, that we have to also have patience with ourselves when we feel that way. Yeah, that's very nice. It's interesting to watch people grow and change too. It's, um, it's nice to have a tribe that you can watch that or a tribe that you can connect with. So when you're doing readings like past life readings, um, I imagine you get a big picture of what their life is about. Is that correct? And what their, their lessons might be and who their soul, um, soul tribes may be? Yeah, so it, it varies kind of in the reading depending on what I see. And oftentimes spirit will kind of show me, we mentioned earlier that the energy continues and it, the energy will loop into this lifetime. So if somebody is going through something in this lifetime that's impacting them in a way that they could benefit from knowing that information from, like maybe it's, it's impacting them in let's say more of a negative way, we're able to see that and say, hey, okay, this was the experience then. And even though it looks different, this is how it's playing out now. And certainly we can see that on a, on a level, like let's just say briefly how the United States right now is in a Pluto return. So it's experiencing energies of that American revolution, even though we're not succeeding from Great Britain, that energy is still here and playing out. So we can have dynamics with people from past lives that that energy is still very prevalent. And there's this rotating energy that is just recycling over and over and over again. So in a reading, it can bring that to light. And depending on what comes through, we can also do healing on that, on that past life issue. Um, but sometimes, or even, how that person played a role for you. 
and have a deeper understanding of that soul connection because it really is like when you get to a place of knowledge and wisdom about your soul connection no matter the dynamic you will have a very big understanding and in my opinion i think that it helps to also grow that unconditional love between you and that person mm. that's a good point and sometimes in life it's in sometimes in incarnations it's healthy connections and sometimes unfortunately it's unhealthy connections but then that goes back to what we're choosing to learn and experience on a soul level of how we are bettering and evolving ourselves yeah i like how you brought up the us too because i think we're having this revolution type of energy come through again yeah. so to me karma and our soul connections it's like we get this energy and you know we we look at it we name it we call it out we heal it we let it go and then it there's another wave so to speak of it it comes up again and it might be if we've done a good job the first time it's still there but it's a smaller wave it's yeah. the same energy we get a chance to again look at it heal it name it release it um so in my language in astrology language i would be calling that plutos uh, <laughs> Pluto would be the one going and pluto's been pluto's been very um very active shall we say in the world chart yeah and you know it's, it's funny but not funny when you think they tried to get rid of it as a planet <laughs> 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 so, yeah, nothing. No, just all the depths yeah. of darkness. But I think that I don't know. I mean, I feel like after this year, we're all going to kind of be professional phoenixes, where we're you know, because Pluto is that life, death, resurrection planet and change. And so, you know, I think we're all evolving on a deep level, and that's exactly what happens with soul connections, and and that's both good and bad that can happen. You know, and there's a lot of this year has also been a lot of putting karmic things to finish for good. So there's been a lot of karmic cycles that have cycled out, you know, with things. So it it can be really positive. Kind of kind of so that we can move up our energy levels. I think that we're clearing out a lot of this stuff. Similar to the three G has gone five G. You know, yeah. humanity is going from three G to five G or <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and I think that we're also going to be experiencing even more, I want to say like upgrades and our soul connection, because we are in a time too that, you know, especially for romantic partnerships or even with family and friends, it really is how we come together on that soul to soul level. And so partnerships and whether it's romantic partnerships or business partnerships, there's going to have to be some kind of soul to soul connection that we experience with the other person that we're choosing to be a romantic partner with, uh, who we're doing business with. So they're, they're, we're opening more from the heart space. Mm -hmm. And that's what the soul connection is all about that we're experiencing. So it's really taking us to an even greater level and we're going to start to experience even higher dimensions than 5d you know even i would say as we get into to next year oh, that's, that's really exciting actually i know it's been a really tough year for probably everyone um in some way shape or form and some worse than others but like you say it's it's the phoenix rising so yeah. Pluto is tearing us down and that's, well, I'm not going to get into all the details, details about that, but that's where we're discovering these things. Really interesting that you mentioned we're all getting good at being Phoenixes because it's tearing down our structures and our systems that aren't working for us anymore so we can let go of them and yeah. create something that works for us better. And as you say, on a soul connection, so your heart's in there. Yeah. And I think what's interesting too is you know, when we think about lessons and we think about these things that maybe karmically we've done, there is moments and times, and I think 2020 has done that for people where we have to kind of pause and really look internally 
at ourselves and look at things that trigger us or that maybe drive us crazy or push our buttons. And, and when we kind of refuse to look at that, that's when we're going to start to find where when we have children and they become like little mirrors of everything that we did to other people and we can be like, wow, <laughs> it's like I'm looking at myself. And so I think for many, it's the opportunity to kind of take a good look in the mirror and be like, where do I need to heal myself in order to have the most positive relationships I can with anybody in our family or our friends or our romantic partners or coworkers? Yeah. Because it really is the opportunity to, to learn and then to heal from that. Mm -hmm. And it's our responsibility. We get it's it's a gift here. Do you want to look at it? Do you want to heal it? Do you want to learn yes. it? Do you want to improve it? Yeah. And it's not easy work. It's not. And I think one of the hardest things, I mean, there's a lot of things in my opinion that are hard things, but I think one of the hardest things that we may also experience is that when we love somebody on a very deep level and having to watch them go through their own sort of lessons and karmic things that they signed up to learn because they can actually do really bad detriment to that soul if you just step in and be like, hey, let me save the day for you, you know, because you're kind of taking away from what they wanted to learn. And so it's hard to sometimes lean back and be like, I love them and I'm here for them and you continue to be there for them, but allow them to go through that and experience it the way that they chose to go through. And that can be really tough, whether that's a parent or a friend or a child or our partner, it can be really hard to say, okay, I'm here when you need me. And, but I understand. Yeah. yeah. That's a powerful way to look at it. It's really, um, I agree with you. It's really difficult to stand by and let someone do them. <laughs> don't, don't turn around that corner. Cause I know what's around that corner for you. <laughs> yeah. But they yeah. need to be the corner. Yeah. And I think we see that sometimes a lot with uh, parent and child dynamics too, where, you know, the parent has experienced it before. So they want to, they want the child to benefit from their knowledge. But there are sometimes too, when, that child has to be able to learn on their own in some capacity, depending on, I mean, that's a very broad topic, but you know, there are certain dynamics that every child has to learn in order to, for them to evolve too, mm -hmm. um, especially when they get older. Yeah. So it's, it's multi-layered for sure. Multi-layered. Sometimes that's why having the knowledge of past life stuff can be very beneficial in the bigger understanding of, of what's going on. Yeah. What lessons are pertinent to you in this lifetime? What's your focus on? I think that's a really good point because if someone comes to you, Stacy, and gets a past life reading, then they can say, okay, so I went through this, uh, especially death. Death is such a, a traumatic experience for us. So, whatever death they experience, they would need to work through all of that trauma as well, right? Yeah, yes. Besides the soul connections with those people in that lifetime, that they're still here now working through those same soul connection issues this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and even in the concept of when we love somebody and lose somebody, they can also serve as cataclysmic moments for us, you know, over the course of our lives, whether it's, I think, you know, people can experience where they've lost somebody and then maybe that's when they've decided to open up their own gifts and experience intuition or, you know, tap into different, it's, it's essentially tapping into the right frequency. It's like finding the right radio station. You know, you just got to tune it every once in a while. But even in that, you know, there's, there's things that we can learn and experience and grow from and, and evolve through 
but especially with those dynamics. I mean, I've read for people where their great grandparents have come through. Now, certainly maybe they, a lot of them don't know their great grandparents, mm -hmm. but when we have that soul connection and we have those soul tribe connections, they're always part of us. And they're always there to help us, especially when they're our ancestors. Yeah, and whether they're in this physical plane or on the other side, right. our soul connections are still there. We can still talk to them and ask for their assistance. Yes, yeah. and they love that. It's like they're just waiting around for people to ask them to help them, you know? But we have to remember when we're in a situation to ask for that help. And I know that's a hard thing for at least it was for me in the beginning to, to remember how to ask for help because we think that we need to control things a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's actually when we kind of surrender the control and say, you guys figure it out, you know, then yeah. we're able to see it move faster, come together. You know, that art of surrender that can take place from that. Where things flow smoothly and it all happens magically instead of you trying to force it through. <laughs> and it's like, why didn't I do that before? Yeah. You know? I find it helps that, um, I think it would help just to be in practice of asking for help from our, our soul connections and our ancestors, our angels, our guides, if we do it on a regular basis. So even, I'll do things like at the grocery store, you know? Yeah. Where, where is this? Can you just lead me in the direction or which one should I choose? And, yeah. and it's just great to get into that habit because I think if I'm in a dangerous situation or a fight or flight situation, I would just naturally do that now. Yeah. You yeah. think it would probably be the same way. I'm yeah, sure. absolutely. And I mean, even things like a parking space or, um, yes. I mean, <laughs> you know, sometimes I do it like if I, and because uh, sometimes spirit, like I, it's like they do want me to work on my driving abilities, but sometimes I do it even for green lights, you know, <laughs> where I'm like, I, maybe I'm running a little bit late and I want to get there. You know, I'm just like, help me with this green light or, you know, whatever it may be, you know, so you, you got to kind of play around with it and obviously be safe about it. And, but, yeah. but they can help you with almost anything. Yeah. I've never experienced something where they couldn't help with something. No, unless I've just been closed off for some reason. But yes. then I would never ask anyway if I'm closed off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and and sometimes, yeah, sometimes we can't always see it too. Like we can see the action maybe of things unfold, like when it comes to maybe asking assistance to get a job or for, I'm sure that there are people out there who have had a strong soul connection with a person and they're like, man, I wish that person could call me, you know, and then suddenly that person calls you. Um, but we, those are easy signs to see. And then when there's other signs in the in-between time, because sometimes the signs will come real fast and then sometimes we gotta have to wait a little bit. And it's in those moments that we can be like feeling unsure or, doubting maybe and so that's when when we ask for the help it's okay to also ask for what you want to see you know instead of maybe like send me a sign that you don't know what you're looking for you can say you know send me a sunflower or send me name something and say this is what I'd like to see to let me know I'm on the right path mm -hmm. and that can happen and we can even see I mean, I know I've experienced too where we can see the most random people mm -hmm. give the most profound advice. And those people can, can have a past life connection to us where they agreed to maybe step in in that moment in your life to, to have that conversation and almost maybe remind you who you are. Maybe you don't even recognize what role that conversation will play till later, but it can activate things in you, you know, where people just randomly talk to you and you're like, how do I know you? <laughs> but it can just spark up a conversation and then it can dissipate as fast as it came in. But that person agreed to come there and talk to you 
so that it could maybe awaken something within you. Beautiful. We're all connected. I think we just are, are the players in our drama of life are, have already kind of been selected and we've already kind of joined forces to, to travel this yeah. together. Just like yeah. Yeah. Our team so creation we've all decided to come to <laughs> To be exactly. So yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Well, thank you so much, Stacy. Thank you, Linda. It was such a pleasure to get to know you more and to dive into soul connections with you. And for those of you out there, please go to team go to soulnavigation.com and you can find Stacy there and you can see all kinds of reads that she does. She's amazing, she's a medium, she's a psychic. She is a past life reader, and she's beautiful as you can see inside and out. Her soul shines through, and uh, she can help you in whatever capacity you may need. So thank you so much from Team Soul Navigation and Talk Show Tuesday. We're here every Tuesday at 3 p.m. See you soon. Bye, guys.